What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports. And hey, want to talk some hockey right now? And uh, we, we, all, we all know the Flyers aren't playing right now. But and we're all looking at the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs as we speak. You got the Dallas Stars beating the Vegas Golden Knights in five games to advance to the uh, Stanley Cup final. And we're going to a game six between the Lightning and New York Islanders for in the Eastern Conference Finals to see which one of those two teams make the uh, Stanley Cup Finals. It's going to be an interesting ride right there. The Islanders winning in double overtime in Game 5 to force a Game 6. The way the Dallas Stars are playing right now, Anton Hudobin being a brick wall for the Dallas Stars right now. Dallas actually actually seeing their potential right now. Actually playing and living up to their potential right now. It's, a, it's pretty fun to watch right now. It's fun hockey. And honestly, if you're looking at just a hockey fan's perspective right now, it's entertaining hockey. And you know right now, hockey is not going to be... Uh, winning any of the ratings battles with football just starting up again with the NBA playoffs currently underway and the way the NBA playoffs are shaping up right now with the way the Miami Heat-Boston series is going right now and just with the Denver Nuggets coming back down from a 3-1 series lead to beat the Clippers and now they're going to be taking on LeBron James and the Lakers. The NHL is not going to compare to those types of ratings, but hey, why not talk hockey right now and talk the uh, Philadelphia Flyers situation right now. We're going to be definitely covering the uh, Stanley Cup Finals when those games happen. It'll be an interesting time right here. But first, I want to talk about looking into, I would say, the Flyers offseason right now. And the way maybe Chuck Fletcher and this team can find a way to shape up, not I wouldn't say shake up the roster, but find a way to make the team better going into next season. Because it's, it's going to be a very quick turnaround. Because you got the NHL draft starting at the beginning of October. It's basically, you got the next few weeks, basically, and the Stanley Cup Finals is going to be over probably before the end of September. It's going to be a very, very quick turnaround, and the draft is at the beginning of October, and I think the Flyers, where they fall in the draft right now in the first round, I think it's in the late 20s right now, maybe early 20s. I'm not exactly sure which pick they have. I think it's between 23 and 26. So they have around one of those picks, and this draft right now is expected to be very deep. And maybe once we get closer towards the NHL draft, I'll do another video talk about who I think the Flyers should pick and maybe where they look to go into. But I think that's another video for another day. But looking more towards the offseason, and like I said, how Chuck Fletcher can maybe do some work right now to uh, maybe make this roster a little bit better. Because there's definitely some question marks and moves to be made this offseason. It's going to be very difficult, though, because when you're looking at the salary cap right now, it's going to be a flat cap for many years to come at this point. It was expected to rise up to maybe the mid to high 80s at this point, maybe even reaching $90 million. But with the stoppage of the season and everything that was going on right now, they're settling for a flat cap right now, I think, for the next two or three seasons at that $81.5 million mark. It's going to be definitely difficult for a lot of teams that are very close to the cap right now to make some moves right now, especially signing guys in three agency. A lot of these teams are definitely going to have to work the trade market more rather than free agency. And I think that's where the Flyers fall as well because they're very close to, close to the cap right now. And they do have some contracts that are going to be coming off the books right now too that they'll have to look into as well. So like with the forward core, you got Pitlick coming off, you got Grant coming off, you got Thompson coming off. So those three UFAs right there. You got some RFAs mixed in there as well. You got Nicholas Albe Kubel becoming an RFA as well. And there's some looks right there on the RFA market too. You got Nicholas Albe Kubel, you got Phil Myers coming becoming an RFA too. He's definitely going to make some money too. I wouldn't say much. I would say closer to what maybe Sandheim is possibly making. It's not going to be a major high extent contract right there with Phil Myers. Neither Nicholas Albe Kubel. He's definitely going to be making more money than what he's making right now in his rookie deal, but it's probably not going to be anything close to extreme. It's definitely going to be like maybe like around the 1 1.5 to 2 million annual range, maybe something around there. Robert Haig is also coming off the books as an RFA as well. So who knows what the Flyers maybe move him in a trade, move his rights, or they maybe sign him to another cheap deal. And then you're also losing a guy like Justin Braun, who it's uh he's honestly to me, Justin Braun, he was okay during the season, but it did stand out during the playoffs that he was very not that good in tight situations when we needed him to step up. It really wasn't that big of an impact right there with Justin Braun. And it also does stand out when you give a second-round pick and a third-round pick for a guy of that caliber. Eh, not that good of caliber of Justin Braun. He's basically just a stay-at-home, bottom-pairing defenseman. And you gave up two early-round draft picks for him. It's not the best of looks right there. 
and he is going to walk in free agency. So maybe I doubt the Flyers are going to re-sign him. Even though Chuck Fletcher did say he wants to look for more help on depth for the defensive core. And that's definitely going to be a question mark going right there. You're also going to be losing Brian Elliott's contract. Most likely, I would expect the Flyers to re-sign Elliott maybe to the same possible type of contract that he's making right now. That one year, $2 million annual. Maybe he gets that one year, same exact contract at this point. And then also, when you're looking at the RFAs as well, what's going to happen with a guy like Nolan Patrick? He's definitely not going to demand any money on the market just because of how unlucky he has been in his first three seasons as a flyer. The first season, basically every year that he's played right now has been injury riddled, especially this year. He hasn't played one game at all in the final year of his entry-level contract. And with the whole mind grain issue, it's a, it's a tough situation to see right there. And I feel like some people are looking more down on Patrick just because he's a second overall pick and he hasn't lived up to a potential of a second overall pick. But when you go back to that draft in 2017, when the Flyers surprisingly went up from the 13th pick to the second overall pick in the draft lottery, going into that draft, the the noise was it, the draft was not deep at all. It was probably one of the weakest drafts that we have seen this decade at this point. It was a very weak draft. And going into that draft, Patrick was the number one racked guy going into that draft for many years to come. And Nico Hiche, the guy who the Devils drafted, he was an up-and-comer. He came in while Patrick was injured during his junior year going into that draft. He came in, stole some of the spotlight, and he took the first overall pick spot from Patrick. And also, it's credit to the Devils, I think they didn't want to draft Patrick just because they were afraid of his health going down the, down the line. And that's an understandable move right there by New Jersey. But the Flyers, when Ron Hextall made that draft pick, you're taking the next guy, the next best player available. And the next best player available at number two was Nolan Patrick. And then you get the other people saying, oh, look at the other guys they left on the board. They left a guy like Miro Heiskin on the board, Kale McCarr, Elias Pettersson. The next best player available at that point in the draft was Nolan Patrick. And yes, credit it, you're looking at Miro Heiskin right now, what he's doing for Dallas, what Kale McCarr has done in his first season with Colorado. Look at what Elias Pettersson is doing for Vancouver at this point, too. It's a, yeah, it's a tough pill to swallow right there, but at that point in the draft, Patrick was the best player available, and Ron Hextall went with the best player available. Also, he was filling the needs because the Flyers needed a center, and also during that draft, they traded Braden Shen. So, Patrick was coming in being that replacement for Shen at that point, and they needed a center. So, understandably, you're, t you're picking what you need, and you're picking the best player available, which was Nolan Patrick. Sadly, at this point, in the first three stages of his entry-level contract, he's been very unlucky. He's just been a v very unlucky, and it's sad to see, and especially during this year, just with the whole migraine situation. Just, like, how badly that has been affecting him. And maybe could that be correlated with uh, concussion symptoms? Who knows? But the, the most important thing for him right now is that he needs to get better, get healthy, focus on getting healthy, and just be ready when you're able to. And Chuck Fletcher has stated that Patrick has been feeling the best he has been. He's sleeping better, and he's feeling better. And he does expect Patrick to be back for next season. It just depends on when next season starts. And also a key contributor, too, is having a healthy Oscar Limblom added back to your lineup. And the big story with Oscar Limbaugh just going into the, coming back from his whole cancer treatments, getting diagnosed in December, not playing for so long, and then dealing with cancer during the whole COVID situation, and still finishing your treatments. It's a nice story, too, and you're coming back during Game 6 and Game 7 of the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah, having a healthy Oscar Limbaugh for next season is definitely going to help. Because when he went down with the whole cancer situation, when he was diagnosed, he was the Flyers' leading goal scorer at that point. So that was a definite miss of a goal scorer in the lineup. So having him back is going to be a definite help. But if you're looking for, I would say Chuck Fletcher has been stating in the exit interviews that what stood out more to him in the playoffs with his team was the lack of depth scoring because that's what was the Flyers' MO during the regular season. Their depth scoring really helped them in the regular season. It was just why they played so good. Granted, you had a lot of guys on the top scoring during the regular season too, but also you added with the depth scoring as well. That was a pretty big contributor for the Flyers right there. And then when you go into the playoffs, your top guys don't score. Your depth guys really don't do much. Even though there were some depth guys that were scoring, uh, Tyler Pitlick, 
Michael Raffle, Scott Wallen, those guys were scoring. But you really getting, weren't getting any contribution from any guys like Nicolas Albi Kubel, who can put in a goal from here and now, but he wasn't really doing anything in the playoffs. Nate Thompson, not really a guy you expect to score goals, but wasn't really contributing to the offense. It was really like a guy like a Michael Raffle that was contributing, and Tyler Pitlick. So the bottom score, the bottom six really was one of the key factors, but I, I guess he didn't want to hit the hammer on the nail again too hard because that's been basically what Elaine Vigneault was stating throughout the entire playoffs was that the top guys weren't doing much. Basically, the only guy that showed up, I would say, for mostly the playoff games out of the top six was Kevin Hayes. He was our best guy on the top six, and he was per- he was a factor every single night. And it's sadly that was the case. You don't have Travis Konechny, who was your leading goal scorer going into the playoffs. He puts a goose egg on the board. Claude Drew showed up maybe a little too late, wasn't able to generate anything. Sean Couturier, he went with his MCL sprain, really couldn't do anything. Jake Voracek, he was good in the Montreal series, couldn't do anything right here. It's a tough situation to be in right here. And James Van Riemsdyk, James Van Riemsdyk, he potted in a couple goals late in that series against the Islanders, but too little too late at that point as well. And also, honestly, at this point, your goaltending situation is solved because Carter Hart has proved He's a goaltender of the future. He is going to be a star, a starter on your team for years to come. And that's a definite benefit right there. But it's also kind of scary, too, just because next year is the last year of his contract. And he go- and he comes on RFA. Just imagine what type of money he's going to be uh, demanding. It's just weird. If he has a really good season next year, if it's Vezina caliber type of quality from Carter Hart next year, just imagine the contract he would- he's going to demand. Whew. Uh, that's going to be a definite question mark right there. But the question mark right now is, what are the Flyers going to do in the offseason to help bolster this roster? Do they bring some back some of these guys that are free agents? Guys that I don't expect the Flyers to bring back, guys like Derek Grant, guys like Nate Thompson. Nate Thompson has shown ex- an expression of wanting to come back here, maybe signing a cheap contract with the Flyers. But I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think Justin Braun comes back. The only guy that I see coming back out of the guys that are free agents on this team is a guy like Tyler Pitlick. Because, honestly... He was really good for us in that bottom six throughout the entire season. And I would like a guy to, that type of guy to come back. He's going to demand a little more money. He was making just a million dollars. He's going to demand a little more. Not to a demanding extent, but he's going to demand some money. Maybe around the $2.5 million, maybe a $3 million range. Maybe something where Michael Raffle is making right now. Maybe somewhere around that. But definitely, I would like a guy like a Tyler Pitlick to make his way back into the lineup. And just... If you're looking at the free agency market, the Flyers really, I think, can't really do much just because we're so tight on the cap. And also, you're losing other contracts that be bought out. If you're looking at the Matt Niskanen trade where we retained Radko Gudis' salary, that contract's going to come off the books for Gudis. I think also the Schlemko contract is coming off. So some buyouts right there that are coming off the books, but you're still dealing with that Andrew McDonald contract buyout, which expires after next season. So there's some money coming off the books, and there's still some staying on. So I think in total, the cap space that the Flyers are going to have going into this offseason, if everything pans out right, it's going to be around $8.9 million. I think somewhere around that range. So it's not that much money to work with, but I think the way the Flyers need to work if they want to do something to bolster this roster, they have to work work the trade market. And I feel like that's what a lot of teams are going to do. And we all know the rumors that are going to be going through the offseason with the Flyers. Shane Goss is bare. James Van Riemsdyk, are one of those two players not going to be on the roster next season? Are the Flyers going to bring in someone with a trade? And there's also many of these rumors that maybe Johnny Gaudreau comes back to Philadelphia if the Flyers do work a trade out. Um, basically, at that point, it's a, I have to see it to believe it. Basically, you take rumors with a grain of salt. But the way I look at it right now, if I'm going into next season, these are one of the two things that I'm going to believe that's going to happen. So it's either th- it's either one thing or the other. So, it's either James Van Riemsdyk is not going to be a flyer next season, or it's going to be Shane Gossespierre. One of those two guys are not going to be on the roster next season. And if and for the other guy that is on the roster, they're going to be one of the people that's left unprotected in the expansion draft for Seattle when they come into the league next season. Well, the season after. The expansion draft is after next season. So, one of those two guys that's still on the roster going into next year, those that guy is going to be left unprotected for the expansion draft. And hopefully, the Seattle takes them. That's basically going to be the hope at this point. So you're going to be either James Van Riemsdyk or Shane Gossespair. One of those two guys is not going to be on the roster next season. Maybe Chuck Fletcher works out a trade that brings someone in. Maybe he... Basically at this point, if you're going to make a trade for a big guy, 
you're going to have to be swapping contract at this point. Because say if the Flyers do go for a guy like a Johnny Gaudreau, he makes that, I think, around between what Shane Gosses Bear and JVR is making, like around like maybe like the five, six million dollar range. JVR is making seven. Shane Gosses Bear is making four point five million dollars a year. So you're gonna have the work you're gonna have to work the trade market a little bit if you're going after a guy like Johnny Gaudreau. If you want to try to factor in a guy like Shane Gosses Bear or JVR to that trade, you're gonna have to package a little bit of something. Because it, Johnny Gaudreau, he's probably not going to demand a first... Calgary's probably not going to demand a first-round pick from, but they're probably going to demand a prospect, at least. You're probably going to have to deal with, if you're going with this trade, getting rid of a prospect. But you got to also settle which prospects are untouchable. Is Morgan Frost a guy that's untouchable? Is Isaac Ratcliffe a guy that's untouchable? Look at some of these guys that are in the prospect pool. Who are the untouchables? And to me, the untouchables are Morgan Frost, Isaac Ratcliffe, a guy like Bobby Brink, maybe a Cam York, and a Jaeger Zamula. I think those are the guys that are pretty much untouchable at this point because I do feel like some of those guys can come up and make a name for themselves. Who knows when Bobby Brink and Cam York are done with their college seasons? Who knows if they even play college hockey this year? So basically, we just got to wait and see what happens. But maybe uh, Calgary takes on maybe more of the uh, beer tier prospects that we have in this organization. Who knows? This is basically just all hypothetical at this point. I'm not saying the Flyers are going to be trading for Ghana Gaudreau, but who knows if that's something that might happen this season. Maybe if you look at uh, Winnipeg right now, maybe they look at trading a guy like Patrick Laine because that's been a major rumor since Winnipeg got eliminated from the playoffs. Maybe you go after a guy like Patrick Laine, who the Flyers would definitely need because the Flyers, I think one of the major needs they go in, going into the season that they need is a goal scorer because that's something the Flyers have been lacking for a ton of years. For a ton of years. The last pure goal scorer I believe the Flyers have had well, a guy that, like a pure sniper, a guy that you know can put the puck into the net, was honestly Jeff Carter. He was a guy that had an amazing wrist shot. He he was a guy that can score. But if you're talking a guy that can score maybe 40 to 50 goals a season, and that's becoming a more common theme as the years go by, that's becoming more common. Some guys are scoring 40 to 50 goals a season. If you're looking at that type of player, I think Patrick Laine, even though like the past few seasons have been pretty underwhelming from him, he still has that potential. He still has that ceiling to hit. Maybe he needs a change of scenery. Maybe some teams try to go and take a crack at him because he is an RFA this year, and he's going to be demanding a little bit of money. So maybe Winnipeg trades his rights away to another team for them to sign him. So you never know what happens right there. There's also a guy on Winnipeg that might be trade bait as well as Nikolai Ehlers. Maybe the Flyers go out and try to get a guy like him. But it all depends on what the demanding price is for them. And Chuck Fletcher is going to have to work the trade market the right way. Because the Flyers, the way they're tight on the cap right now, it's going to be hard to make some moves going into free agency. It's going to be very, very difficult. And there's also some guys that you, maybe you can fill in on the bottom six too. There's a guy that stands out to me from Columbus. A guy like Josh Anderson. He's a guy that's been shown. He can score goals on the bottom six. He tallied 25 to 30 goals one season before. Even though this season for him, he's been very injury riddled and he hasn't played that much. I think he's a guy that can very much bolster the bottom six because I do think the one need the Flyers need as well is to get a little bit more physical on the bottom six because you're seeing some teams right now that are playing. Look at a team like Tampa Bay. When they got swept last year in the first round against Columbus, they were completely outplayed physically in just every state of the game. Tampa Bay could not catch up to Columbus. But what did Tampa Bay do in the offseason? They got a little bit tougher. They added guys to that bottom six who can hit. But also, Tampa Bay is still a very skilled team, so they're matching the skill and the grittiness. So maybe that's something the Flyers need to add because they were they honestly were a very soft team in the, both of their playoff rounds against Montreal and against New York. Maybe they need to add some speed. Maybe they need to add some grit to that bottom six to make them a little bit better so they don't look as soft. Maybe that's something they need to do. And maybe if this guy does go in the free agency market, I don't think he'll be very expensive at all. He'll be very cheap. Granted, that's if he goes into the free agency market. It's a guy like Pat Maroon. I think Patty Maroon would be a guy that fits perfectly with the bottom six of this roster. He's playing on that cheap deal with Tampa Bay, a one-year contract. He won a Stanley Cup last year with the Blues. He might go on to win another Stanley Cup with the Tampa Bay Lightning. The guy knows what it takes to get it done. He's won a cup before. He might do it again. So if he goes to the free agency market... He's definitely not going to be very expensive. He's going to be somewhat cheap. I would like, if he does go in the free agency market, I would like for the Flyers to go after him. It's going to be a very interesting offseason. There's moves to be made. There's ways to make this roster better. And also, you look at the roster, too. Maybe the Flyers, 
don't make that many moves in the offseason, and they they uh, trust the uh, prospects from within to come in and make a big step and, and bolster this roster even more. Maybe a guy like Morgan Frost comes up. Maybe Joel Faraby takes the next step. And also, you're granted that the fact you'll get a healthy Oscar Limbaugh. Maybe you get Nolan Patrick starting next season. That's going to be a definite benefit to the roster as well. So maybe some prospects come up and make a name for themselves. But maybe uh, you go out there and look for that depth defenseman that you could put on that bottom pair. Maybe a young guy also comes up on the defensive core and makes a name for himself. Mainly a guy like a Jaeger Zamula. He was signed to his entry-level contract. He's a guy that has a lot of potential to be a good scoring offensive defenseman for this team. He's a big guy. I think the one thing that he needs to develop, he needs to gain a little bit more size. He needs to get a little more hefty. Use his body a little bit more. But he has the offensive potential. He's another one of those undrafted free agents that Ron Hextall found. Basically a guy like a Phil Myers. And looking into the offseason for the defensive core, Ivan Provorov, do you still keep that pairing with him in that Niskanen? Maybe that's something that sticks going into the next season. Travis Sanheim, Phil Myers, the Islanders, they did show their weaknesses in, in that series. When you pressure them, they're afraid to move the puck. They're afraid to get it out. They struggle when they're under pressure. Maybe those two, they need to add a little more size to their game, use their body a little bit more, use their physicality. Maybe that's something they need to look at going into the offseason. There's definitely a lot of question marks that the Flyers are going to meet for this offseason. The draft will start. Maybe we'll see a trade at the, at the draft this year. I'm not saying the Flyers, but I do expect this year's trade market to be very big just because there's a lot of teams in this league that are very close to the cap space right now. And a lot of teams are going to be utilizing that trade market a lot. And who knows? Maybe this year's draft class, maybe this year's draft will see a lot of trades happening because sometimes we have, we've been missing a lot of those blockbuster trades at the drafts in the past few years. Maybe we'll see a couple in this year's draft. Maybe that'll be something. So we're definitely going to have more hockey videos coming in, in the future. Definitely when the finals happen, we'll have videos recapping those games when they happen. So for this video right now, what are your thoughts on what the Flyers need to do this offseason? What do you think they need to do? How do they bolster the roster? What additions do you think they need to be made? Do they need to be made from within? Or do you think they tap into that trade market? So what are your thoughts? So leave your comments in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.